Greetings all, and happy birthday to you. Last Outrider here with a special introduction video. After communicating with several fanatical Blood Angels players, I have discovered that they are not even aware of what the Shield Worlds are, or that all of the Sons of Sanguinius were almost tyrannid food. It's true. We know about the Battle of McCrag, where the Tyranids basically ate the first company of Ultramarines. But this involves the full chapter of Blood Angels and a full chapter of Flesh Terrors, both of which nearly devoured by the Tyranids. That means the scale here is literally over 20 times the size of the Battle of McCrag. And even most Blood Angel players don't even know it happened. Because of this, I am now giving you an introductory video about what the Shield Worlds are. A vast uh, defense system just outside of McCrag. I mean, just outside of Baal to defend the Blood Angels from any attack. And the Tyranids just bleh, sweep right through it like it's a wet paper bag. So until then, let's get to it. It is the year 998 of the 31st millennium, and the shield worlds of the Cryptus system are drowning beneath a tide of Tyranids. So vast is the tendril of High Fleet Leviathan that despite the courage and valor of the system's defenders, many of the shield worlds have all but fallen to the Great Devourer scant days after its arrival. With such a grave threat so near to his chapter's homeworld, Commander Dante cannot risk abandoning the shield worlds to the voracious appetite of the Hive Fleet. To do so would be to let the Leviathan gorge on the rich biomass of the Cryptus system's worlds and grow in strength such that even the mighty sons of Sanguinius would be unable to prevent the destruction of their chapter planet. So does the Lord of the Blood Angels set forth to take the fight to the Tyranids and deny the Hive World its prize. The Shield Worlds. The Cryptus system was a bastion of the Imperium, and its worlds were ramparts that faced the void with bristling guns and high walls. Each of its four principal planets, Asphodex, Lysios, Arios, and Tartaros, toiled for the glory of the Emperor under the twin suns of their system known as the Eyes of Cryptus. The Imperial citizens were secure in the power of their sprawling defenses and brave soldiers. For millennia, these worlds had stood inviolate against the darkness, bathed in the baleful red light of their suns, a shield against the enemies of mankind. When the first sub-tendrils of Hive Fleet Leviathan reached out towards the twin worlds of Cryptus, the Imperium remained confident that the system's heavy defended worlds, vast planetary defense forces, and powerful battle fleet would hold the Xenos back. Even so, Astra Militarum regiments were rushed to reinforce the system, 
and the veteran Cadian general de Hurst took command of the defense. The Imperial Guard dug in on the city world of Asphodex, garrisoned the void domes of Tartaros, sent air wings to the gas giant of Eros, and deployed armored formations to the toxic moon of Ixioi. Upon the ruined world of Lysios, Canonus Magda Grace of Adepta Sororitas set defending the nomadic tribes. However, these planet-bound defenses were merely a precaution in the eyes of the Imperium, as the system's greatest barrier was out among the stars. Beyond the Cryptus battle fleet and its vast armada of void ships was an asteroid field, ringing the twin stars known as the Castellan Belt. This ancient field of mined out asteroids was now a gun line of fortified planetoids. Millions of turrets and macro cannons pointed out into the darkness of space. And yet, this was not the greatest of the system's defenses. One more barrier lurked on the very edge of the open void. The Aegis Demandio. This was a wall of unnatural cold that was anathema to all life. It was believed that the Tyranids could not hope to cross the Aegis and survive. However, as has oft happened in the Imperium's long and bloody history, it had underestimated its foes. The High Fleet sailed straight through the Aegis, encasing itself in vile secretions that quickly froze into diamond-hard armor. This shield not only protected the Tyranids from the unnatural cold, but it was also proof against the Imperial Battle Fleet's massed guns. Numbering millions of vital ships and lesser organisms, the alien tendril divided as it sailed in system, heading to each of the inhabited worlds. The Imperial ships were brushed aside, completely overwhelmed by an enemy that outnumbered them many times over. The battle amongst the stars was lost in a span of hours. The rest of the system's defenders, forced to watch powerless from their planetary fortifications as the Tyranids consumed the Imperial fleet and moved in for the kill. Then, the invasion began in earnest, and every planet of the Cryptus felt the talons of the Devourer. On Asphodex, General de Hurst led an inspired defense that denied the Tyranids the skies while channeling them into kill zones on the ground. On Lysios, Canonus Magda Grace rallied the nomadic tribes and their caravans into a great corral as the first Xenos swarms fell among them. In the swirling blue skies of Arios, Astra Militarium Valkyrie wings patrolled the upper atmosphere, fighting off the worst of the Tyranids could throw at them. Meanwhile, on the moon of Ixioi, the Voistran tank regiments 
fought a bitter battle in the poison mists against the hordes of Xenos invaders. And on Tartaros, Imperial Guardsmen struggled to defend the Void Domes from the hulking monsters sent against them. Everywhere, battle raged unchecked. And on every planet, the skies were filled with falling spores and screaming alien horrors. At first, it seemed like the Imperium might emerge victorious. And great victories were reported on both Athrodex and Lysios as the Astra Militarium and Adepta Sororitas took heavy toll upon the invaders. The ruins of Phodia, Asphodex's primary city, and the plains of Lysios were both thick with alien dead. But these successes were brought with the lives of countless brave imperial defenders. These early victories were to provide only false hope. Only after the first bloody day of fighting did the true size of the Tyranid invasion fleet become clear. As wave after wave of bio-creatures rained down from the skies to take the place of the millions already slain. Worst still, the hive mind was adapting at a terrifying rate. And for every tired and tried and tested tactic of the Imperium, had discovered to defeat the Tyranids, the hive mind had developed a defense. What little hope there had been died at the sight of the stars blotted out by hive ships and the worlds of the cryptic system seething with Xenos invaders. On Asphodex, the great city burned out of control, and General de Hurst's defenses were overrun. Attacked from within and without, his armies crumbled, and soon the Imperial Guard's carefully laid lines of defense had become isolated pockets of resistance that were devoured one by one. In the chaos of battle, the host disappeared, and all organized resistance began to break down. On Lysios, Magda Grace's inspired defense became a desperate last stand. The canonist held her army together until she was eventually slain by a lictor in the final moments of the evacuation. Though many of her sisters escaped, many more perished in the final retreat. Eros, Tartaros, Ixioi, all suffered similar defeats. Their defenders broken and shattered before the alien swarm. As the second day, yes, people, that's one day. As the second day drew to a close, the shield worlds had all but been broken, and the crypta system completely overrun by the high fleet. Only a faint cry for help escaped out into the warp to be heard beyond the Aegis Diamando. That, my friends, is the introduction. This is what happened before the Blood Angels arrived and Flesh Tears.
Okay? So, the scale of this event makes the Battle of McCrag look like a tea party. And for Tyranid players, I have some good news for you. This is not going to be some mindless slaughter of mainless, nameless Tyranid monsters. You are facing, or they are facing, the Annihilation Swarm. And there will be full rules and formations that allow you to eat blood angels like candy presented after the story. So you should stick clear too. Stick to these videos and find out what massacres are coming next time. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>